Russian President Vladimir Putin is trying to create the illusion of control over the events in the Kursk region. To do this, he exaggerates the successes of Russian troops in this region and sometimes even openly lies. In particular, in an interview with the Russian propagandists on October the 25th, Putin again stated that 2,000 Ukrainian soldiers in the Kursk region were allegedly surrounded by Russians. This was noted by the American Institute for the Study of War, ISW. Talking to propagandists of the state Russian TV channel Russia One, the dictator again repeated the thesis voiced on October the 24th at the closing of the BRICS summit about the alleged encirclement of 2,000 Ukrainian soldiers in the Kursk region. This time, he embellished the statement with the assertion that the encircled Ukrainian soldiers do not even understand that they are surrounded. Putin also added that the connection between the encircled units and the main Ukrainian forces had allegedly been lost and stated that the Russian Defense Ministry had not publicly reported the successful capture of some Ukrainian positions in the Kursk region by Russian troops. Putin again did not admit that the Ukrainian salient in the Kursk region extends from the Ukrainian-Russian international border and that Ukrainian troops can freely pass through sections of the border controlled by Ukraine. The ISW added, at the same time after Putin's first statement about the encirclement of Ukrainian soldiers and the fact that they allegedly suffered significant losses, the commander-in-chief of the armed forces of Ukraine, Oleksandr Sirsky, made a public refutation of the Russian dictator's words. Sirsky also announced the losses that Putin's army had suffered in the Kursk region since the beginning of the Ukrainian operation. During this time, Russia has lost 17,819 of its servicemen, 711 of whom were captured by the defense forces. Putin's exaggerated statistics on Ukrainian casualties are likely part of his attempts to explain Russia's failure to decisively repel the Ukrainian invasion of the Kursk region after almost three months in the context of the likely imminent deployment of North Korean troops to fight in the area. The ISW concluded, Russia has begun to decommission old T-34 tanks from the 1940s, likely to use them in the war against Ukraine. This is a desperate move that shows the Russian armed forces acute shortage of armored vehicles. Footage of the T-34 was published by Ascent expert Intelskyzo on the social network X. The published video showed not only T-34s, but also IS-3 tanks and ISU-152 artillery units. All of this equipment was produced in the early 1940s for participation in World War Intelskyzo was able to identify the location where the video was filmed. It is the 392nd training center of the Russian Armed Forces in Khabarovsk. The arrival of DPRK troops was previously spotted there. While the Soviet rarity is currently at the proving ground, we should expect it to arrive at the front soon. The Russian occupation army is suffering huge losses, including in armored vehicles. Experts say there is an acute shortage of them at the front. It should be noted that the T-34 is a legendary Soviet tank from World War II. It was one of the most widely produced and successful tanks of that time. However, it is catastrophically outdated and is unlikely to be as successful on the battlefield as before. It has weak armor, poor firepower, and communication problems. In addition, the T-34 crew has significantly less chance of survival in the event of a fire strike than more modern tanks. Russia is forced to transfer military equipment to Ukraine that has been obsolete for several decades. The Russian army is almost completely destroyed. Soviet-era arms storage bases are one of the primary sources that still allow the Russian armed forces to fight despite massive losses on the battlefield. Russia has been removing supplies of tanks, armored vehicles, and artillery from these storage bases since 2022. The arms produced in the 1940s, 1960s, many of which were decommissioned many years or decades ago, have returned to the battlefield. The stored arms are also massively cannibalized for spare parts, which Russian arms factories and hundreds of field arms repair facilities utilize. These storage bases are not endless despite Russia keeping thousands of tanks and howitzers after 1991. Moreover, Russia cannot replenish these arms and material. If Ukraine can maintain a high level of combat intensity and the mounting level of Russian losses continues in 2024, 
it will be much harder for the Russian army to maintain its military power for offensive operations in 2025. That means the conventional Russian military threat to states other than Ukraine will become much more limited. Propagandist and Z War correspondent Maxim Kalashnikov announced the deterioration of the state of the Russian occupation army fighting against Ukraine. He mentioned the terrible supply of groups and cases of reprisals by commanders against their own soldiers. We are having a difficult conversation here today on Kursk soil. The topic is very painful. You can see for yourself, especially after the death of Ernest and Goodwin's group, we are in a very bad shape with the armed forces. We literally do not have an army, but a militia, which sometimes lives only thanks to the help of civilian volunteers. We have to raise money for an army. What is happening to our army? It is a difficult feeling, frankly speaking. A friend who has now gone on a contract writes that something terrible is happening with supplies and training, Kalashnikov said. According to him, defeatism is overwhelming Russian ultra-patriots. Where have we ended up? Is there a future in this war? I look at what is happening and you know, the winners in war do not look like this. There is one reason that is leading the military actions to a positional dead end. This is the collapse of the system of state governance in the country. A stream of simply black news, negativity. We just saw strikes on the missile arsenals in Taropets. There was a strike in Tikhoretsk, also on ammunition. Everyone is already discussing the unsuccessful launch of our Sarmat missile. Well, and there is enough of everything else. This shooting in Moscow, the open conflict between the Kadyrov and Kerimov clans, you yourself understand that the North Caucasus can vibrate there. All this begins with a breakthrough of the Ukrainian armed forces to Kursk, or even with the sinking of a cruiser, Moscow, from the failures of 2022. It reminds me not of victory, but of a series of catastrophes and failures that began in the Soviet Union in 1986. Complete déjà vu, Kalashnikov said. He added that Russia was facing a crisis of governance as a result of negative personnel selection in Russia's top leadership. With such a state apparatus, wars are not won. The state system is becoming a collective moron. What follows may simply be disintegration. Either the government makes very significant, non-trivial efforts to win, or we will have to prepare for the worst, the Z propagandist declared.